All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Grant Hubbard here, Tim Crouch, and another Gutter Growth Podcast. Today, once again, we're going to talk some fundamentals for you. How's it going, Tim? What's up, Grant? What's going on, man? Gutters. Another day of gutters. How was your day? It's pretty good today. Today was a, um, a busier day. We're booked out about five weeks right now. We just had our record breaking and it's not big for everybody, but we did $91,000 this week, Tim. Wow. That's a good week. It's pretty wild. And we didn't do like any copper jobs or anything like that. I mean, this is all six inch K style, some aluminum half round and some Euro box best week, hands down. Uh, we've had at this particular location. So we're really excited about that. What do you guys think? Out. What are them? What's that? So what do you guys think about that? They pretty excited. They they love it, right? Um, and it goes in waves, just like everything else. They work really, really hard. They make some good money. Um, believe it or not, we had two guys punch out $59,000 in two weeks. Shout out to Hubert and Boris. And uh, I'll be completely upfront about what they did. People are going to go, ah, they must have did a big copper. They did six-inch K-style um a government job so you don't bid those you know there's not all these there's some but no prevailing wages and all this stuff it was a one-story massive um section eight housing like doom, doom, doom. either way i mean these guys did i think we're at eight eight twenty five a foot on six inch gutter they put up some seven, footage yeah seven dollars a foot on the guards and then three by four downspouts and then splash blocks at every one. Uh, the government likes so these particular ones. We've done a couple. They like doing them. So they rocked it. They kicked it. I did a walkthrough today. I was really proud. I had like two little discrepancies that I wanted them to change before we punched out the bill. But um, yeah, they did 29,000 last week, 29,000 the week before. And the rest of the guys are loving it. They're making money and we're booked out five weeks. 65-ish an average a week is what we're doing right now. So but to our point about what we're going to talk about today as the director of operations and I'm in charge of sales and installation is like how to get more money out of your lead. Right. I, I know you are said splash that, block. So. so you obviously had yeah. some type of upsell there, didn't you? You have to, I think we uh, roughly maybe 140 downspouts or something. So every single one gets a splash block. Mm -hmm. What are you charging per uh, splash block? We're at $20 a piece on the splash block, I believe. So as everybody knows, when somebody gives you a lot of volume, like the government, we lower our prices. Lowering our prices at, uh, you know, seven-ish, $8 a foot for a, um, we use EcoGuard and then six-inch gutters. That's not a bad price when someone's giving you, you know, 6,000 feet of gutter, 2,000 feet of downspout, 6,000 feet of guard, you know, whatever it may be. Because um, our... Typical pricing is around twelve to thirteen dollars a foot. So mm -hmm. uh, I think we pay. I buy everything in bulk. I think I pay about probably three dollars a splash block, and we typically charge twenty to twenty five on them. So we might have charged fifteen on these, but that's a pretty profits. good price because I used to pay six dollars. Yeah, and this is the um, man. I order so many. This is the eighteen inch long one. This isn't the little. I don't do that little baby stuff. Yep. And I, I definitely don't set them backwards. So the water has to jump. <laughs> I, you have, I've been seeing some stuff lately. And it because makes there, sense. there's people that tell you to do that. They're like, oh, this is the way it's done. No. Nah, yeah. No. Nah. That's not <laughs> anyone can can we can we touch base on that real quick? Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by One Gutter Guard, the premium gutter guard that delivers the highest performance, quality, and value to your customers. From its different mesh filters to its unibody construction, One Gutter Guard can be the difference maker in your business. Are you interested in becoming part of the exclusive dealer network? Contact them today at onegutterguard.com or just give them a call. Now back to our show. So I get it. Hats off to the people. Like if you overanalyze anything, like you could sharpen a pencil from the eraser side, I guess you'll eventually get to lead, right? But talk about a plastic splash block. Now it doesn't have this huge light. Are you telling me you're supposed to put the wide end to the <laughs> house and then go to this really narrow little half inch bump at the end? And so 
you guys, the splash blocks are supposed to have the fat end facing the house and the open end. Um, hey, so the water point, hence doesn't come back towards the house. That's why. Right. It, it, especially as if the ground sags or anything. Exactly. Secondly, yeah. although some people are saying, well, they're supposed to be turned around for erosion. If you're having that much water go to one downspout, you should probably get some underground drains. Right. Which is another let's upsell. Just, yeah, let's talk. Let's okay, let's throw out a couple more upsells and we'll come back. And then like I wanna say, and I always try to be really honest. I you know, I could show the numbers to anybody. I think we sell guards on about sixty-five percent of our homes. And we offer let's just say like five different levels of guards. People could ask me why it's because I'm a, I feel like I'm a margins master. I have a, I keep my same margin for different customers. Um, anyway, so I offer different, different products for different installs, but, uh, so we got guards, we got splash blocks, underground drains. What else is there? I mean, aesthetically you could go to four inch round downspouts versus corrugated, uh, we do that a lot. You do that a lot, right? You go with the and contemporary a, smooth downspouts. Three by four again, smooth. Again, ship to you. Um, well, you can use ground spouts, um, gutter gates. The gutter that's, gate, baby. Look at that sexy gutter gate. That's a sexy gutter gate, you know. And uh, shout out my brother's gutters. We got those. This is a white one. I guess you can't see it. But I'll uh, touch base on these gutter gates real quick. I've been running some promotions on them. You guys should get involved with these things. You can reach out to me or Tim about them. We can make you a dealer and you can basically pay half of what anybody else is paying for them. And you don't have to sell them. Like people think dealer, it means, oh, I've got to buy them and, you know, buy the thousands and sell them. No, it just means that you're not going to buy two from us. You have to buy at least 50 if you want to be considered a dealer. Is that five houses talking about upsell? It's a great upsell. Yeah, and if you have a nice CRM like Jobber, you could just have that as an add-on where it doesn't even reflect in the price. It shows them the price, but it's not going to reflect in the price until they hit that checkbox. So tell me a little bit about that. Like I'm familiar, but you know, tell me and like how easy is it to upsell? Like with with your CRM. Well, there's a thing called power of suggestion. Google it. Look it up. Power of suggestion. It's a real thing. It's a natural law. It's as real as gravity. The power of suggestion, you know, people don't necessarily know. Like I, when I started gutters at 18, I didn't even know what a gutter was. That's how stupid I was. And a lot of these homeowners are the same way. You know, they don't at 18, know. We don't know. They a just lot know I have a roof. I need gutters. It's going to dump the water. But they don't think about, oh, the ground's pitched towards my house. That water's just going to sit there. I need for that water to go somewhere. They don't know that. So if you don't identify these problems for them and say, hey, listen, I noticed the ground's pitching towards the house right now. We could put a downspout here. We could even put a splash block, which is an upsell. But yep. if we don't drain this and bury it and put it somewhere else, you're going to have water setting up against your foundation. It's going to stay wet and damp, um, you know, and it's going to, eventually cause more erosion because it's not it's not going it doesn't have good runoff here and if you don't tell them that they're not going to know so your job is to educate the customer and you know when you're doing the estimate you might not want to want to scare them away with this huge price by just adding everything you could add but you can right. still add it show them the price and with jobber at least it's not going to reflect on the price if you make it an option they would have to hit that check box to add it into the price and then it then it'll show up. But they get to see it, they get to see how much it is, and you get to tell them why they need it because that's your job is to educate them. I love that. Thanks for bringing that up. You know who else uses the power of suggestion? Who? Any company that's making a billion dollars. Walmart, you Amazon. You ever try to check out an Amazon? I'll give you an example. When I bought this this arm right here after I bought the microphone, I went and bought this arm on Amazon, right? I clicked the arm. You can't see the, it, then it recommends this clamp down here. But then it recommended the case, which the recommended people who the bought backpack. this also <laughs> bought this. <laughs> and I bought it all and I actually love it. I needed it all, right? So the same thing, you try to check out a Publix or HEB, that curbside, right? Well, or, or Domino's Pizza, anything, right? Anybody that knows what they're doing now is saying, would you like fries with that? 
And I, honestly, Grant, I love that Amazon does that because I don't even know what I need. Same thing that these people, <laughs> these people don't know what they need. You're here to tell them and you need to do it just like Amazon does it. And you need to tell them what they need, suggest it to them, and you're solving problems for them. You're not telling them something they don't need. You're not lying to them. You're identifying a real problem and you're solving it and you're educating the customer. That is so, so true. Uh, one more example on the podcast stuff. You know, this kind of the way our relationship came around the podcast, right? Like it wasn't super planned out. You were starting the lighting company. We had just, you know, became partners in this. And I was like, crap, I got to fill Tim's shoes, right? I need to get some podcast stuff going. I didn't have the camera. I just got my little laptop. And of course, I've taken it to another level now. But thank you, Amazon, because I didn't know crap about what I needed. And when I went on there, they taught me, you need this. Don't forget the cord. Don't forget the microphone cover. Don't forget an extra microphone, a stand, you know, all this. I didn't go wild. I didn't spend, you know, $20,000. I didn't have to like be persuaded into be giving away all my money. They educated a couple, Yeah. They said, I said, oh, that makes sense. Oh, I also need a splitter. Okay. I was ready to rock. I trusted the professionals. Other people had purchased. So that, I'm glad that you brought that up. Honestly, um, I'm going to go out and say you're doing your customer a disservice if yes. you're not telling him everything that they need, if you're not trying to upsell them, if you're not giving them everything that they absolutely do need. Would anybody like it if when they went to purchase the car? Now, remember, there's extremes, right, on both sides of everything. But if you went to purchase a car and you told them, listen, I'd like to buy a, you know, we're making a little money now. I'd like to get a luxury vehicle. I don't want to get a like a Mercedes or a Maserati, but I want something midline. And then they just offered you this 1987 Toyota Camry with roll up windows and like slider seats and stuff. And you're looking for like, and they don't know any better. I don't know anything about, and you sold them that as a luxury vehicle. How about offer them some trim packages, right? So we like to do that in uh, gutters. Let's get right into it, man. What do you want to talk about first? Um, you want to do drains? I think that underground drains has such a importance in the gutter business, right? I don't think everyone needs to be offering drains, but I think that you should be knowledgeable enough to pass on doing them, right? Like, okay, that's not for me, but still educate the customer. Hey, we're going to collect all this water that's been creating this line down the side of your home, and we're going to make it, you know, shoot out of downspouts that could cause some erosion and then educate them. I think the education is, even if you can't offer it, is worth a mention because that's still going to make you stand out from your competitors that aren't saying anything. Nope, this gutter system is going to work just fine. Everything will be perfect after that. Honestly, I don't even feel, like I'm, I'm obviously a pretty decent salesperson. Um, I sold a lot of jobs, but I don't feel it was like I had this great technique. I feel like it was basically me educating the customer and because I showcase my knowledge by educating them because I'm teaching them something now I'm giving value to them by teaching them and so by me educating them I sold a lot of jobs that way especially the copper jobs and the high-end jobs yeah because it set me apart from the customer I mean the uh the competition competition yeah yeah no I agree on that for sure so I mean I I, I, I did drains and I I get why some people don't want to do it. Maybe their guys don't want to do it. But if you have guys that'll do it, or if you could get guys that do it, it's very profitable, very profitable. And you don't have to necessarily go out and buy all this equipment and, you know, do uh, water pumps and all that stuff. The, the basic thing that most gutter guys should do is just get black pipe corrugated. Even if you use P PVC, it's just draining the downspouts out. You don't have to fix, you don't have to become a drainage expert and fix all their drainage problems. You're there to sell them the gutters and the gutters is causing another issue by dumping water out onto the ground and leaving it at the foundation. If you just do downspout drainage and get it away from the foundation and place it where it's supposed to be, then you're doing your customer a better service and it's very profitable. It's very profitable. And very right profitable. now, I think with the 7 million, 8 million illegals we have in this country, like there's a, a small portion of them that are actually here and allowed to work. 
go get some of those guys. I'm not saying go get the illegals. I'm saying get the ones that at least have the number that are allowed to work. And these Even guys those, work their there's labor yeah, force their companies. Isn't there labor yeah. force companies you could call and you could get a guy? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying go to Home Depot or, or the, the they'll pay stores. them twelve, but you're paying a little bit more. I mean, there's definitely mm-hmm. agencies where you could get day day labor. Yeah. You know, and, and that, you that's know. that's the thing to do, and you can have your crew kind of direct them. And but drainage is simple. You're, you're you're digging a hole. You're not even much pitching it because you could only go down as far as the pop up allows you to go down. So you're just making a trench, and it's very shallow, and you're basically burying it. And uh, just the main thing that you want to do is cut that grass perfectly and fold it back. That yeah. way, you're not making a mess. You're you're cutting the grass, folding it one way putting the dirt on the other side, raking it in, and then folding that grass back over. And so it's it's very simple work. You could get anyone to do it with, you know, 15 minutes of instruction and a little bit of supervision throughout it, the process. Yeah, and if you're an owner-operator and you really want to up, up your take-home, like just be out there and lead by example. Be careful. Here in Texas, 811, you can have them mark. They'll come mark with you. For, within 48 hours, they'll come mark like gas, water, you know, all that stuff. If you feel like you're going deep, you know, my rule has always been like, we're going to try to figure out the sprinkler system, you know, but if we end up doing something to the sprinkler system, I mean, those are super easy fixes. Just to give you guys some numbers here and not numbers that I'm doing 1600, 2000 customers a year, but let's say you're a smaller guy and you do 250 customers a year and let's go super low because I actually know the real numbers. And if you need training, then get into our gutter growth program on how to uh, scale your business. Let's just say you did 12% of your jobs you were able to sell drains on. That's 30 customers a year. And your average ticket on a full wrap for some underground drains, just rough number average ticket, let's just say is 3,800 bucks times 30 jobs a year. That's an extra 114,000, all right? Now your material costs, let's just say it's a little high, it's at 25%. So it's 30 grand in materials. It's actually like 27,000 materials for 112, you pay out some labor. So you make an extra 40, 50 grand, you know? Know know your numbers. If you know your numbers, then we can figure out exactly how much you make. And then you can go, I don't wanna sell 30, I wanna sell 60, which means I'm gonna make an extra two, 28, material you know like i mean and you know what grant i just want to mention always everyone always thinks like you know how do i make more money i need to get more leads i need to get more jobs coming in you need to nurture the jobs that you do have and i'm not saying that you don't need to get leads that may be your problem it may not be your problem but you everybody can definitely maximize the profits and the leads that they do have and you need to nurture what you have coming in and you got missing you got money that you're leaving on the table for sure well we can always take it back to you know i mean it's the elephant in the room is is leaf filter um i hate their product i don't hate their installers but i don't like their business model and i definitely don't like their product but when they're doing right in your backyard their sales guys closing thirty thousand dollar job after job after job after job and you're having a problem closing the $1,300 job. I'm not saying go to the 30, but I'm saying meet them up around the three or four. You, you know, you, one thing's for sure is that leaf filters going in it with a different mentality. They believe they could do it. So they are doing it. And if you're not doing it, I'm not saying, uh-huh. I'm not saying you'd even need to get leaf filters prices. You could, but you could no. charge a good rate and you could charge to actually make money. And you're doing the customers a disservice if you're not making money because you're not going to become a good company. You're not going to be able to grow. You're not going to be having an, have an office admin. You're not going to be able to afford these things if you're not making money. So your service will absolutely improve with the more money that you do make. So you mm-hmm. want to make money here, but you don't have to rip people off. But the thing is, if you go into it with the mentality that I can get this amount of money, that I can actually, my services are of value, then you're going to get it because you believe it. And it's just... You're going into it with a different mentality. 100%. The little engine that could, right? I mean, is uh, an epic story. And you can do it. And so you guys that want to know, and let's go on um, 
there's a lot you can do with drains. I mean, you can do so much, but Tim, you leaf said guard. I mean, and you, you, you could sell them the leaf guard to keep the shit out of the drains. And Tim doesn't mean, mean the brand leaf guard. Just no, I, I just, just mean of, products that cover <laughs> gutter covers, leaf guards, like whatever, like all that. Yeah. The margins are great on those too. I'll tell you, um, I want you guys to know margins. Let's step back a little bit on drains. Um, when I do a drain job, the the margins, the material cost are usually a little bit more controlled if you go to the big box stores, meaning Home Depot or something like that. But if you can make nice with a local plumbing supply and maybe start up a, a, an account with them, around 20 to 22%, okay, on all your parts. Now, on leaf guards, depending on the specific one you're selling, I can tell you the one like that we just installed on the government project cost us 89 cents a foot. And we sold it for, I think, seven or seven twenty five a foot. That's good margins. You guys can do the math. So, and we didn't sell them a piece of crap. I mean, we sold them and, and no different when we put the one gutter guard up, pay X amount for that. And we sell that stuff for 20 to 25 bucks a foot. I mean, think about this, Grant. You could have a two thousand twenty-five, three thousand dollar job, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You could almost double the profits by adding leaf guard. Yep. And then you could double them again. You could triple them if you, you add triple drainage. You get two things to sell them that you're not selling, and maybe they don't Absolutely. want drainage, but no one's offering them splash blocks. Yeah, and figure out figure out your your niche. Like, you know, we're not gonna pump a sales preach to you right now. We want you to understand that offering these gutter gates is an upsell. Um, people probably have their own opinion about them, but every single one of you that I have sent a sample to, every single one of you that I've sent a sample to have given me great feedback. Not like, uh, it's decent. I don't know that I'll use it. You guys know. All of you people, we sent out a lot of these. Rob Gerling actually just got one today. He loves it. I mean, all you got to do is show the customer and they're going to they're gonna like it. You don't want to protect the kids and the dogs that are running around the corners with this thing. You don't want when your husband is slamming or your wife or your lawn guy or your, you. For or road whipping, not to be able to go up. Yeah, that weed whip just destroys that aluminum. You could weed whip the crap out of this thing. What customer is not going to give you $25 for this thing or 30 bucks? Once you bring it up, but when you're not bringing it up, they're not going to buy it. They don't know. And you know, another thing, Grant, you could have a nice picture of that on a downspout and you could add it into your line item on Jobber exactly. you know, and you could put it to where it doesn't show up on the price until they click it, but it shows them the price. You can have mm -hmm. a picture right on there. They know what it is. So even if they're not home, you don't get a chance to talk about talk about it. You have this to where they have the option to click in and get this. They see a picture of it. They understand what it is. Power suggestions working. Boom, you get an upsell. Now you're making more profits on that job. You guys need to come check us out at guttergrowth.com. Continue to listen to our podcast for free. We're going to give you so many nuggets right here. But wouldn't you like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me or Tim or me and Tim, or, you know, have access to Johnny D or Johnny M. Like our team knows what we're doing. I want to read you a little testimonial and I'm actually going to leave the name out, even though I know this person would not care. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you have done and do for me this past year. My first year of doing gutters, I did $537,000. He's doing gutters with a helper. And I'll be honest, it's a female. Okay. I want to take you and Lisa to dinner sometime. So this was prior to gutter growth. You know, we, everybody knows I was, we were doing things separately. Now we're doing them together. Obviously we haven't been together a year. I said, that's so awesome. Yes, sir. And this year I'm going to do 1.5 to 2 million. Do you see that growth? He's doing it right here, right, right where I'm at. This guy, gentleman actually lives like 15 minutes from me and I still ain't scared. And we're going to do two and a half million last year. And we're going to do our three, three and a half. Like there's room for everybody to grow. 
Come on, industry. You know why he's doing that, though? Because he wasn't scared to sell rain chains. He wasn't scared to sell gutter gates. He didn't get into the drain yet, not in his first year. He's still getting his feet under him. But he wasn't scared to sell four-inch round downspouts and guards. And, and right here in San Antonio, Austin area, where people are still doing gutters for $4 a foot because of all the illegals that have machines, and he's over here charging 10 to $15 a foot for five and six inch gutters. And upselling. He's not leaving anything off the table this year except for the doubt, the drains. And he'll be introducing them this next year. People know what they're getting. They know when they get a $4 a foot job that they're just expecting someone to come in with some whatever, you know, a yeah. truck and just, you know, wham, bam. And they know when they're paying top dollar and they got an office answering the phone. You answer the phone every single time they call. You got communication through text when I'm on the way. They know when you're a company operating at a high level. And there's a certain group of customers. That's what they want. You're there. There's a big, their guy. a big group. Yeah, You're not there group. to compete with the $4 guy. You're there to compete with, you know, the, cus the customers that want that type of level of service. You hit the nail on the head, too. What you said earlier was making sure that you have enough money. No one's going to be perfect. You may have to return to five to 15% of your clients, right? We call them callbacks or warranty work. Sometimes it's just answering a simple question, right? They'll call you and say, my gutter's falling off. And really maybe the guys forgot to screw a splash guard or there's a piece of guard laying on the ground that they left on the roof or they left an elbow in the They yard. always over-exaggerate it. They, everything's falling yeah. off, right? But do you even charge enough at the beginning to make sure that you're not losing money when you come back to service your customer? Talk about that. You, you just made another valid point. I mean, that's why with my Christmas lights business, I charged top dollar because I knew that I had to be there within 24 hours if they had a problem. And I had a yeah. couple of people say to me, now I understand why you charge as much as you do. And so, you know, they still paid it initially, but my service showed them why. And they were happy with my service and were happy with paying it because... I was able to do that. And and so if you do a job, there's going to be problems that arise. Your customer is going to be happy if you're Johnny on the spot and you take care of it, you know, because they're, they're getting the service that they paid for. You're going to have problems now and then. What else do we... Uh, we got there. We, we went over... Well, I don't know if we can read it here. Just one of our main sponsors here, One Gutter Guard. I want to talk about um leaf guards real quick and this one being my particular favorite it doesn't have to be everyone's favorite if you haven't used it you wouldn't know uh, a lot of people like to use uh hydro shield or hydro flow they say it's the same it's absolutely not see how easy i pulled that out so this is a stainless steel mesh right here um that goes into this chassis and you can see how easy i can put it back in but by no means, I'm not. I want to make sure I'm not squeezing it or anything. I want to hold it loose from the back. Ah, caught my dang finger. It doesn't just slide right out. I mean, you have to grab it and pull it. Upsell, right? When we show this to our customers, oh, this guard won't. This mesh right here is maybe a little too tightly woven for the amount of rainfall you get. And then we go. We have this other one, and we have this other one. And we have this other one. Oh, and you want to capture maximum? Or like here in Texas, people are doing uh, water containment. So talking about guards, talking about a uh, drainage. There's all these other upsells once you learn how to sell drains, right? Because you need to have protection on the gutter or at least on the downspout, right? You got to have some type of screen. This one for me and uh, a lot of our customers in Texas the finest mesh will even keep pollen out. And that's what they want. Even though they have a filter on their system going to their, you know, 20,000 gallon or 10,000 gallon tanks. If we never mention this, we would never sell it. If we don't mention it, we wouldn't sell it. And that's the power of suggestion. We just want to let them know that there's stuff out there. So what do you think, like, is, so? what do you think, the biggest reason is that guys don't upsell. 
let's let's take two extremes. The brand new guy, the, the answer is probably he doesn't know about all these products. Well, so a, a lot of guys, right, they just don't, it's just not well thought out. So it's not that they mean to be wrong, but it's like, they notice that these leaf, these, uh, you know, different gutter screens or different gutter covers, they notice that they got a bunch of shit on them and it's collecting and it still needs to be clean. So they automatically think, well, it still needs to be clean. So what's the point of having it? Mm -hmm. But they don't think through the fact that that's just stuff on a screen. First off, it's easier to knock off for one. It, it's easier to clean for two. It's still serving a purpose, even though it still needs maintenance. The gutter inside of it, underneath that cover, is not clogged, and it's not holding a bunch of water. And if you clog the the downspout, now that that whole system is going to be holding water for maybe days, maybe weeks, maybe months, because you don't know how long it's going to take for that homeowner to discover they have a problem, and that yeah. their drains, you know, clogged. And now, you know, water being uh, eight pa eight point three pounds per gallon. What do you do into that system with all that weight sitting in there for days, yeah. weeks, or months, maybe even years? And not Let to alone mention, the mosquitoes and bugs. not to even mention the moisture content that you have at the edge of the roof line. It's rotting out your roof line because uh, that's what causes roof rot. You can't have roof rot without a certain moisture content. I don't know exactly what that moisture content is. But I know that having water up at the edge of the roof is going to make high moisture content. And you're going to rot it out. So you're doing a disservice not selling the cover because the cover, even though it's not working because it needs maintenance, because it hasn't been cleaned in six months, a year or two years, it's still not clogging your gutter and it's still doing its job. So yeah. the thing is, is that's another upsell, maintenance packages. So even though you sell them leaf guard, don't think that you don't need to sell them a maintenance package. What you need to do is educate the customer on why they still need a maintenance package and right. what the cover is actually doing for them. It's not just like, to keep stuff out of your gutter. I like that reoccurring revenue point more than I do the clean outs. Now, like um, some people can master it as their, their soul. And I'll just shout out two people, right? Donovan Quisenberry and then David that we had on here, right? They do clean outs, they have clean out companies and that's fabulous because you can structure and systematize it. And I know those two guys do very well with it. But for us that are really looking more for linear footage of install with guard to, to make our margins, we don't wanna slow down and stop and do a clean out, right? I'd much rather sell them the guards and then hit them with a maintenance reoccurring twice a year on their guards and people go, I could never get that. Okay. Well then don't get it. Like you don't have to like, but I just explained my, it to you. You don't, you don't want water in the gutter period. Right. It's my cup. I'll worry about what's in my cup. You worry about what's in your cup. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it, but it works. It works well. Um, so uh, leaf guards, I want to um, splash box. Let's touch on that real quick. I think there's a huge upsell, and that's the simplest one besides the gutter gate. Now that uh, I know about the gutter gate, I'm going to sell the gutter gate, and we do before we sell the splash block. I mean, think about it this way. Like, a lot of people are afraid to spend money on marketing for whatever reason. I don't know. But when you do spend money on marketing, that job has a certain job cost. It might cost you 200 bucks to get that job. I don't know. It just depends on what you're spending marketing on and what type of... Uh, yeah. sales ratio you have on on your uh, estimates so you close in 25 percent or 60 but um you know with that being said if you sell them splash blocks and they got five six ten down spouts i don't know and you're making 15 20 bucks per splash block you may have just covered the cost that it costs to get that job in the first place absolutely Absolutely. I know those numbers really well. Right. So um, Spectre sells splash blocks for five bucks. And you should be selling them for 15 to 20. Now, again, Tim, you are absolutely right. The average cost of a lead could have a ton of variance. But let's just say it's anywhere just wildly from 20 to 100 bucks. 
the average cost around the country is probably around 50 or 60. If you're a huge company, franchise, et cetera, you could be up in the 90s to $100 a lead. And Tim, you taught it very well. You're not actually spending money. That's a boomerang. So I, I hate it when you even say spending money now because I'm like, that's not true. You're not spending money. It's a boomerang. And I use that all the time. It's very true. And it makes us feel better when we're spending $20,000, $25,000 a month <laughs> on advertising. And, oh, Kip, I'm like, Kip, we ain't spending shit. It's a boomerang. He's like, oh, yeah. That's <laughs> He's like, but, yeah, girl. But let's talk a number real quick. Let's say we yeah. spent $21,000 in advertising last month. You guys do the math. We're coming up. We just are closing our last three weeks out of this month, and we got one more. We got 69000 on the books this week, 91000 last week, 74000 the week before, and then sixty five again. And that cost us twenty grand. I'm going to have yeah, some money. You don't have that work it. without it. So, I mean, you, you need it. There's a certain job cost. You're also going to have a certain uh, – average job cost so like your average job out of all your jobs if you do the math it's going to be 2500 five grand whatever it is for your company you're going to have an average and if you know your average that it costs to actually get that job you're not going to be so scared of spending that money because if it, it even if it is 200 bucks but you're bringing in three grand on average i want to spend as many 200 dollars as i can how many can i give out because i just want to yeah. keep bringing in the three thousand that that 200 that I'm putting out is giving me. It's a big boomerang on the way back. It is. And then what's next after the boomerang? Know your numbers or before, but sometime during that time, we're telling you, use the boomerang, know your numbers, and then learn how to upsell. And you can start to control your margins. And the margin, once you know those, that's how much you get to keep that net. You, know, you can start uh, to control uh, that. Another thing, um, Grant, you know, teacher, and I'm sure you do this, but educate your guys. Your guys could upsell. You know, you may oh, have no. pitched us. You, you may have pitched us on the uh, estimate, and the customer was like, "Nah, not right now." But now the guys out there, he notices a problem, and he's telling the customer the same thing. And that customer is like, "You know what? The salesman told me that too, and now this is a second person telling me this. Maybe I ought to do this." And, and then you are here on time your community your company communicated well you didn't take my money and run you know you you were here on in two tuesdays when at 1 a.m or whatever time you said you were going to be i actually trust you guys the gutters are going up now they look good you know what yeah let's roll with them absolutely at my company you have to upsell and if you already priced them out for it they already know the price so it's not even like the 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 um you know, the uh, installer has to even tell them the price. If you've already priced it out, they decided not to do it. But now that installer knows that if he sees a problem, he should maybe bring it up and maybe it's an upsell. Maybe, you know, you give that installer a percentage if they, they do an upsell, so they got yeah. some incentive. Yep. We but get the power suggestion is powerful and it should be passed along to everybody in the co in the company. Your your office should be doing it. You should be doing yes. it. Your your guys should be doing it. You should all be speaking the same language. So Lisa, um, who is our admin, right? Absolutely. When she is scheduling out the work, she's already looking through the work order. She sees all the pictures. She sees the trees. She's looking because she can make money too. Incentivize everything. She's looking now trying to find that customer that just wouldn't buy gutter gates or splash block or guards. She's not going to try to change, you know, adding scupper boxes, collector heads, the shape of the downspout, like the actual scope of work. But she's going to, hey, Mrs. Jones, I wanted to let you know that we're coming in next Thursday at 10 a.m. I noticed you didn't get any guards and there's all those trees. Are you sure? Well, yeah, we just couldn't afford them at this moment. We do 18 months, 0% interest financing. She already, you're telling me you can't do $45 a month? Oh, that's right. James did say that. Ah, the kids were screaming. My husband needed dinner. You know, I was in a rush. Okay, yeah. Here's the other catch. It doesn't matter to me if you use a box truck or enclosed trailer. For you guys that are using an open trailer, 
my guys wear mobile shops. They keep all five kinds of guards on their truck in different sizes. They keep extra gutter gates. They keep an extra 20 or 30 splash blocks. And people go, well, what if they break? What if I lost $3 because I sold an extra 800? So one or two breaks. We keep them. We keep the ground spouts. So that's why we, the brothers that just do gutters, use these massive trucks. Because we keep all these parts and then we train our guys to sell them. It's called that's the how you make my profits. I mean, you could, you may not be able to structure a second truck out right now or a third or fourth or the fifth truck, but you can make the trucks that you have running make more money. What else do we got on the upsell list? You can just start to offer four inch round. I'm going to know we got a summit here. coming up pretty soon. Uh oh. What do we got? Uh, Five months, I think we're going to announce the date soon. You know what I like about us, Tim, even though we we definitely move fast and you are um, a fast mover. You know what you're doing. You push you push the team along and then like we all have our different roles, right? Like Tim's full steam ahead and, you know, we're like, OK, we're let, we're jumping like Call of Duty. You just jump on the train and you're just <laughs> going with it. And then sometimes, like, hold on, we got to slow down. But what I like about the summit is, you know, as much as we want to get all this information out to the public, like, we're putting a lot of thought into this. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, behind the scenes things that are going on. And mm -hmm. we just want to make sure it's right and perfect. Like, we could announce it already. We were going to, like, I don't think we have to be non trans. We were thinking about releasing it today, right? But we just got yeah, no, we, we almost did, and then we thought it through, and we we're like, hold on, we need this, 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 and this done first, and then then we could do it. We could do it properly, and yep. we could do it with putting out a website so you could go ahead and register. So no really reason in us jumping the gun. And uh yep. it's, that's what I like about our partnership to all four of us. We all got our strengths. I move really, really fast. You definitely don't move slow, but we got Johnny <laughs> back in the background, like, hold on, chill, wait yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you well, know, I it's, think it's your new nickname is going to be the Flash. I was telling Lisa that today. I said I'm going to call, start calling Tim the Flash, man, because <laughs> you get it. I mean, but they're brilliant, and uh, what a better partnership, man. Because uh, we got so much we're about to roll out. It's it's kind of hard not to talk about it, right? Like now we, I yeah, definitely more than the stuff, summit. But, but we're we're super proud ooh. of the summit, but we're super we proud of that, and we're focusing on that. We have a lot we're rolling out and um, we're not going to hold it from you guys too long. We're going to, we want to, I think similarly to the way that anybody that's in our group, if you're not in our gutter growth group, reach out and just ask some people about the group. Don't ask us. We're going to be biased, right? It's the best. Like that's obvious. Reach out and ask some people that are in our group, how they feel about it. And we take care of them and we give them a lot of value more than they more than what we say we're going to give for sure. I know that I'm really good at that. And um, we want to protect the people that are coming into our circle. We definitely, we want to nurture that and we want to advise you properly. So we're just thinking a lot of stuff through. Jump on the upsell train. And if you need help, right, I get it. it uh, some people inherently, Tim, are not great. They don't like to ask, right? So the customer calls for, I just need some gutters, and that's all they come out. Get some coaching. You know, another, another thing you can do, if you're not the greatest salesman in the world, you can put together some literature. And, you know, yep. nobody's really giving out nice pamphlets anymore. But if you have, like, some type of brochure that's very educationable, um, you, you could get all that information out so that you're still educating them. If you're not the greatest salesman in the world. And let's be honest, if you're not the greatest salesman in the world, you should be finding that salesman and hiring out your weakness. Because there's there's guys out there. I you know, I, I didn't say I had two salesmen. I only sold all the high end copper stuff. I mean you, you can't do everything. Sales binder. What are you doing back there? I'm getting something brought. No, I'm getting something brought. You keep you were you were talking. I'm getting <laughs> To your point, I've got it's something that I can help them with. No, you're well, good. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. But I, yeah, I was, I, uh, I was talking about hiring out your weaknesses. If you're not the best salesman in the world, you could raise your prices 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then find that salesman and pay him 10% and he'll close more than you are and you won't lose any margin. Exactly. I think a lot of people find out when they get out of their own way, that's when they start making more money. I mean, really, your prices should be based on what you need. If you need an office admin, if you need a salesman, you should be reflecting your prices on what you need so that you can afford that. So don't be afraid to hire a salesman and at the same time, raise your prices 10%. Because I guarantee you, if it's a real good salesman or if he's a real salesman, he's going to work harder at selling and you will because you got 10 other hats to wear and he doesn't. All he has to do is sell. We'll give away some gold here to what you just said. If you're not a good salesperson, create a binder and put every single part that you like and love in it. I'm just going to run through this really quick. I'm not going to let you have my whole binder. K style half round euro straight. I'm going to skip a page. Show them the different end caps. I know you guys can't see this because of the light, but either way. Skip a couple pages here, like I said. Okay, show them every kind of hanger. Show them the hangers you use. Show them the cheap hangers the competitors use. Show them all of it. Let them touch it. Let them feel it. Let's skip a couple pages here. Put in a crap ton of rain chains. Like, you're not selling rain chains? Get a binder and put a whole bunch of rain chains into it. I'm going to skip a couple other pages here. Uh, go to miscellaneous. What do we got in there? We got some drain stuff. You got adapters. You got this. You got the gutter gates. So all I'm saying is. A lot of people are visual. They need to see something. And and us gutter guys were notorious for going out of the job and showing them nothing. We yeah. just measure the house and we got gutters. Oh, it's the same gutters as the house. The gutters over there on that. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so get you a little binder. He said it, get a brochure. Like I've got this one blanked out for uh, educational purposes. So I don't have my logo. We have a ton of information in here. I don't want to give all that away, but get yourself a little binder. And right when you knock on the door, Hey, I'm so-and-so with Joe Blow's gutters. Just hand them this. Let them start flipping through it. Oh, what's this? Oh, what does this do? Put some pictures of your work in here for Christ's sake. I don't do something. And then as you business grows, so we actually don't use the binders. We have digital binders. We have digital portfolios. You'll get to spend some money. Now that is spending money, but I think now I have a hard time using the word spending. So because it's you... not, we're, we're, we invest around here. Hey, so we're trying to go out to eat the other day. Right. And I mean, we're on a big savings push right now. Me and you are doing a lot of things. And, uh, you know, we're just doing, we're, we have a different amount of money coming in now. So we're kind of restructuring, making sure that all this money doesn't just go out the window. We had just took the Atlanta trip. Uh, we got some Gucci, you know, we spent some money. So we get home. It's like the first day, no one wants to cook. And we're like, we should go out to eat. And my wife's like, I thought we were going to spend, I thought we were going to not spend money. We just spent X amount on all of that. First, you know, we bought some nice stuff. We we I treated. Yeah, you stayed in a nice well. killer place. You're looking at a big stadium. Yeah. yeah. So you do. You got. I said, but man, that's not spending. That's food. That money's a boomerang. We're gonna throw it out there, and then we're gonna nurture our body, bro. She gave me this fucking look. Excuse me. <laughs> she goes, I know a liability uh, uh, when I see it. <laughs> yeah. I got it for everything now. Like I want that new truck. It's not spending money. It's a boomerang. I got to watch out. But uh, no, it's very true, though, right? On certain things, it is very true because the lead is the beginning of the cash flow. So you can't use it every day, all day as a boomerang. But that lead is so important. And Tim, it was a great point that you brought up today about the upsell. Nurture the lead, take better care of the lead you have. If you water your plants, you grow bigger flowers. You grow better plants. Mm -hmm. Water those plants. 100%. And there's a whole different conversation to be had about overwatering the plant, right? You don't want to go to the customer. Oh, you don't want to like, drown oh, it. Ah, oh, try to sell them siding and roofing and drains and gutters and the app and this and that. That's and why I like the option sure. feature in uh, Jobber because... They don't have, you're not handing them a paper that's, you know, 10 times the price that they thought. 
Mm -hmm. They could add all that up and make it that. And the yep. power of suggestion might do that because they can rationalize why they need those things, especially when you educate them. Yeah. Education is key, my friend. But you, you know, any, speak, uh... speaking on education, that's another thing that you shouldn't be afraid to spend. It's like the whole country is not afraid to go to college and spend 50, 100 grand. And then, you know, maybe only 20, 30% actually use those degrees. But you're already in the gutter business. You should be spending money on bettering yourself. And I practice what yeah. I preach. How many courses am I going to right now? What Too am I many, spending? Man. On I can education? barely even. Can barely I mean, even I'm getting ready to fly out to Denver here in a couple ten days. Yeah. Education, but you know, this costs money. It's not free. It's a couple grand, maybe three grand mm -hmm. every time I go. I've yeah. definitely spent 10, 15 grand on education this year. And ah, but you know, easily. what would I have done in college? And and even some of the stuff that I hear, especially in the business and marketing part of it, because I teach that, yep. you know, you think, oh, I know it all. But even, even if I do know all of it, it's reminders. And I'm and I, and it's, you know, you gotta you gotta repeat things. You gotta repeat things or else you forget them. If you don't lose it, you if you don't use it, you lose it. Lose it. Yeah, you lose it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, just absolutely. even the reminder on a lot of things is worth it. And that's investing in yourself and investing in yourself. There's going to be a return. So you can't be afraid to invest in education and get smarter and, you know, hire a coach, hook up with us at gutter growth, but there's a return on that stuff. When you pour into yourself, you're going to get out what you put in. Our guys are growing really fast. I'm really proud of our, our, our guys. Uh, I know how we treat them like I try our best to treat them like that's our own business, right? We want to, we, we're not going to, like tell you to do crazy stuff. We don't well, want our, to. our business is making sure that they're growing. So we really yeah. care uh, that they are growing because that's our business. That's what we do, right? Mm hmm I want to name some of these guys. You know what? I think that we're going to have a podcast. Let's get some of our guys on. We'll, we'll do it. We'll figure out how we want to do it. But let's give like, a, we could pick like 10 of our guys. We could pick them all because I think all of them are happy, but. I think we could pick like 10 of them at different levels of business and bring them onto the podcast and give them a couple minutes to, I don't know. It's just, I'm thinking out loud right here, live on air, but cause our guys are so freaking happy, dude. I have just, I heard from Robert Schultz this morning, dude, 6 AM. I was talking to this guy at 6 AM and uh, just briefly, he's like, I'm just going to hire five guys. He's like, we were talking about the interviewing process and, He's like, I'm just going to bring all five on them and just go to work for the next couple of days. I'm like, absolutely. See what they're worth. But anyway, I love hearing from the guys, man. 6 a.m., 11 p.m., 1 a.m. <laughs> I was just talking to Bubba a few months ago, right before we started. Bubba's the man, dude. Yeah. I'm so happy. And look, look at that that man right there, his growth in particular. I mean, he he's uh, he likes to call himself, what's he call himself? I don't know. The, the old guy, I don't know, something. Yeah, he's teaching old dog new tricks. tricks or something. But yeah. he's learning yeah. tricks. And and he, he went from 20 years not not ever getting off the truck to now he's getting off the truck and he's got guys doing it for him. And yeah. He's he, buying in he's bulk. Growing. He bought a Tesla to do his estimates in. He rewrapped everything, right? He rebranded his he company. He he's brand, sharp. But he rebranded, looking amazing. He bought the newest, he bought the very first machine at GutterCon that they came out with, that one that I just got. Spectre. Uh, yeah, Spectre's new machine, the Spartan. Like, he's loving life. And he was just down here. He just took his family on a vacation and came down. And we went and got some ice cream. And the guy's happy. And his wife's happy. And they're spending more time together. And he knows what the boomerang looks like. I have to tell him he's throwing that boomerang out so hard every now and then you got to make sure it doesn't hit you back right in the face. <laughs> Good, stuff. Good stuff, Tim. Good stuff. Great, great yeah, topic. Man. Do we want to give them an insight on what we're, I'm not put you on the spot, but like, that's what we're good at. What do we want to talk about next, next time me and you get on maybe in a week or so. Let's give them some more juice about what the summit's going to have. I, th yeah, I think we're, we need to bring Scott on and maybe have a podcast with Scott and start talking a little bit of Spectra and what our, our new partnership actually, yeah. actually is. Because mm -hmm. we told you that we're partners, but it really, really didn't explain it to you. So no, let's do that next time.
it's definitely a big partnership. It's not like us just going by spectra by spectra. Uh, I we were already doing that. We didn't need to partner. You don't got to partner with if you like the family dollar. Tell people to go spend their money at the family dollar. You don't have to partner with. Them. Yeah, we support who we like. So I mean, you don't have to pay mm -hmm. us for that. You're doing. Nope. You're doing good by the gutter industry. We're going to support you. Yep. So big stuff coming up, man. I appreciate the your time as always, and uh, we partnered on some huge stuff, man. I can't wait, and I appreciate and value you as a person, man, and as a friend. Thank you so much. I appreciate, it, bro. All right, man. Take care, guys. Later.